Good morning, dear students. Welcome to Diksha Online and Chemistry class. So we'll continue with chemical kinetics. So before we go to the class, we'll remind that the real-time doubt clarification is available for this session. So the WhatsApp number for the purpose of doubts is 7259012123. So let us see what are the concepts we are going to learn in today's lecture. So in the previous lecture, we learnt about half-life of chemical reaction and the rate constant of acid hydrolysis of an ester and the gaseous phase reaction. So in today's session, we are going to learn about temperature coefficient of reaction, the Arrhenius equation and effect of catalyst on the rate of chemical reaction. So the concept overview. So effect of temperature on reaction rate, that is temperature coefficient of the reaction. The concept of threshold energy and activation energy. Arrhenius theory of reaction rates. The Arrhenius equation. Energy profile diagram. This will be covered in today's lecture. So effect of temperature on reaction rates. So every reaction will have a positive effect with respect to temperature. That is any chemical reaction when we increase the temperature the rate always will increase. So the rate is always found to be directly proportional to temperature. So no reaction is an exception for this. Always the rate of chemical reaction will be directly dependent on temperature. So at low temperature rate will be less, at high temperature rate will become more and more. So we have two types of reaction. You have learned it in last year in thermochemistry that is exothermic and endothermic reaction. So exothermic reaction is the one where the heat is liberated during the reaction. Endothermic reaction is the one where heat is absorbed during the chemical reaction. So you have learned in chemical equilibrium in last year that for an exothermic reaction the equilibrium constant decreases with temperature and for endothermic reaction equilibrium constant increases with increase in temperature. So that should not be confused with respect to rate constant. So rate of a chemical reaction always shows an increase in rate with respect to temperature irrespective of whether it is exothermic or endothermic. So rate constant K always dependent directly with respect to temperature. So for exothermic reaction, the increase in the rate may be lesser and for an endothermic reaction, increase in the rate may be higher when the temperature is increased. So remember students, always reaction rate or rate constant increases with increase in temperature. So rate of a chemical reaction always increases with increase in temperature. The increase in the rate of for an exothermic reaction is relatively less when compared to increase in the rate of endothermic reaction. Now, what is the reason for increase in the rate? So, when we increase the temperature, all of you know the kinetic energy of the molecules will increase and also the velocity of the molecule will increase and the collision between the molecules will also increase. Due to the increase in the number of collision between the reactant molecules and also due to the increase in the energy of the reactants, the rate is always going to increase. So rate depends upon two factors, the energy associated with the reactants and the number of collisions happening between the reactant molecules. So since both of these increase with increase in temperature, always rate shows positive effect with respect to temperature. Next concept, temperature coefficient of a reaction. So this temperature coefficient of reaction is the ratio of 
rate constant of a reaction at two different temperatures differing by 10 Kelvin. I will repeat, temperature coefficient is the ratio of rate constants of the reaction at two different temperatures differing by 10 Kelvin or 10 degree Celsius. So, temperature coefficient I can write as rate constant K at T plus 10 Kelvin divided by K at temperature T. So, this ratio for most of the reaction will be equal to 2 or even sometime it is greater than 2. So, temperature coefficient for most of the reaction is approximately equal to 2 for most of the chemical reaction. So, we will see the definition once again. The ratio of rate constant of a reaction at a temperature T plus 10 to that of a temperature T is called as temperature coefficient. The temperature coefficient is given by the expression K T plus 10 by K T and the value is approximately equal to 2 for most of the chemical reactions. Energy profile diagram. So, this is very important concept in effect of temperature you should learn. So, in a chemical reaction all of us know that reactants are converting into products. So, whenever there is a collision between reactant molecules that can result in the formation of a product. So, will every collision between the reactant molecules will convert the reactant into products? Not necessarily. So, if I take a graphical representation for that, let us say I am plotting a graph, y axis I have energy and x axis I have progress of reaction or it is also called as reaction coordinate. In any reaction, there is no conversion of reactant into product directly. If I say this is the energy of the reactions, reactants and this is say energy of the products, no direct conversion will happen. So, it has to cross a minimum energy barrier like this. So, this is the energy which is required to be achieved by the reactant molecules. If they enter into collision, they convert into products. This minimum energy is called as threshold energy. Just like in atomic structure you might have studied a threshold frequency that is a minimum frequency required for photoelectric emission. Here threshold energy is the minimum energy that the reactant should possess so that it can convert into products. If the reactants not having threshold energy even if they collide with each other there is no conversion of reactant into product. Now, this is the normal energy of the reactants and this is the threshold energy level. The difference between these two that is called as activation energy. So, what is the definition for activation energy? So, already reactants have some amount of energy. Over and above that normal energy, reactants has to acquire that additional amount of energy to reach the threshold energy state so that they can convert into products. So, activation energy is the minimum excess energy that must be acquired by the reactant molecules to get the threshold energy level and convert into products. That can be a precise definition for activation energy. What is the definition for threshold energy? Threshold energy is the minimum energy that the reactant molecule should possess in order to convert into products. So, let us see these definitions once again. So, this is the energy level diagram what I had written earlier. This is a neat format. So, you can see the curve smooth curve. Threshold energy is the topmost energy level, reactant energy, product energy and activation energy. We will see the definition. Threshold energy the minimum energy that the reacting molecule must possess at the time of collision in order to convert into product. So, that is called as threshold energy level. Activation energy as I told that is the minimum excess energy above the normal energy of the reactants that 
they should possess in order to react and that is called as activation energy. So in general I can write activation energy is equal to threshold energy minus normal energy of the reactants. This is a concept of threshold energy and activation energy. So once again I would like to remind students if you have doubts you can post your doubts on the WhatsApp number 725901123. Now the most important part of this temperature effect is Arrhenius equation. So we have to assume that the general form of Arrhenius equation. So Arrhenius equation tells us the relation between the rate constant of a reaction and the temperature. So broadly Arrhenius equation is given by small k that is rate constant is equal to a into e to the power minus e a by r t where k is the rate constant rate constant a is called as Arrhenius factor or pre exponential factor or also called as collision factor. All of you know Ea is energy of activation, energy of activation R equals gas constant and T equals absolute temperature. So these are the different parameters present in Arrhenius equation. So Arrhenius equation connects the rate constant and the temperature of the given reaction. So K is equal to A into E to the power minus Ea by Rt. That is the Arrhenius equation. So we can see clearly same thing Arrhenius equation is equal to K is equal to A into E to the power minus Ea by Rt where A is a constant for a given reaction it is called as pre exponential factor or Arrhenius factor. Ea is the energy of activation of the reaction and we can very clearly see that E to the power minus Ea by Rt this represents the fraction of molecules that have acquired energy more than the Ea value or they have above the threshold energy level. So K is the rate constant, A is the Arrhenius factor so e to the power of minus Ea by Rt is nothing but K by A. So K by A represents the fraction of molecules that have energy more than the threshold energy level. So if these collide with each other they are converted into products. So as temperature increases the rate constant K increases and the rate of reaction also increases. So K is uh, proportional to T that can be derived from the same Arrhenius equation. So as temperature increases rate constant K increases and the rate also increases and energy of activation is lower the rate will be higher energy of activation is higher the rate will be lesser. So lower the value of Ea higher the activation and higher the rate of the reaction and vice versa. So energy of activation inversely related to rate of the reaction. Effect of temperature on kinetic energy of the molecules. So if I take a temperature energy curve Okay, so if I take x axis, y axis and x axis, here I am taking kinetic energy of the reactants. Now in the y axis I am taking the fraction of molecule having the kinetic energy E. So N E represents the number of molecule which are having kinetic energy E and nt is the total number of molecules. So Ne by nt gives us the fraction of the molecule which possess the kinetic energy equals to E. 
if I plot this fraction versus kinetic energy E, we will get a graph at a particular temperature in this format. So, it increases and becomes minimum and almost parallel to the x axis. So, this is the type of graph we get at a particular temperature. So, if I see this maximum, this is the maximum number of fraction, maximum fraction of the molecule which possesses the kinetic energy equal to this value say E1. So, the fraction is maximum here. So, the most number of molecule possess this kinetic energy E1, the left side one is lower than that energy, lower than the E1 and right side is going to be higher than E1. So, this is the maximum number of molecule possessing this energy which is nothing but E1. If you plot the same graph at two different temperatures, what happens? We will see. So, same graph I am plotting again. So, this is N E by N T and this is kinetic energy. Let us say I am plotting graph at two different temperatures differing by 10 Kelvin. Let us say the first graph is like this. So, this is at temperature T, let us say. The second graph T 10, T plus 10 Kelvin if I take. So, this is the maximum number of molecules causing the kinetic energy as E1 or whatever E I say here. If I take a temperature T plus 10, then the maximum uh, value of kinetic energy increases. The kinetic energy of all the gas molecule will increase with increase in temperature. As a result, the maximum shift to the right, but the curve is little flattened. So, this is the maximum at particular temperature T plus 10. So, this is for T plus 10 Kelvin. Now, let us say if I take this is the activation energy of the reactant Ea. So, we can see very clearly the fraction of molecule possessing the energy greater than Ea will be higher at T plus 10 than at T. So, this is the curve for T, this is the curve for T plus 10. We can see clearly this much of fraction of molecule possessing higher energy than Ea at a temperature T plus 10. So, this is the responsible factor for increase in the rate of chemical reaction when temperature increased by 10 Kelvin. So, the num fraction of molecules almost gets doubled. So, rate also almost gets doubled. So, we will see the same thing, the clear format. So, the distribution of kinetic energy can be obtained by plotting the graph versus the fraction of molecules with kinetic energy. So, the graph looks like this. So, if you this is the most probable kinetic energy, fraction of molecules, kinetic energy, maximum number of molecules possessing this kinetic energy called as most probable kinetic energy. So, if I draw a two different temperature, then you can see the curve will spread to the right and there is a greater proportion of molecule with much higher energies. The area under the curve is always constant because they represent total number of molecules in the reacting system. So, if you see the graph once again, this is the graph. So, this is the small area you can see here where the number of molecules possessing energy higher than Ea is increased at temperature T plus 10, which is a responsible factor for increase in the rate of the reaction. So, it is very clear that from the diagram at temperature T plus 10, the area showing the maximum fraction of molecules having energy equal or more than activation energy will be higher than at temperature T 10, which is a responsible factor for increasing the rate. This number even gets almost doubled. So, the reaction rate also gets doubled for every 10 degree rise in the temperature. So, I am going to remind once again the students which are who are having doubts can post their doubts in WhatsApp 
with the number 7259012123. We'll go further. Activated complex theory. What is this activated complex theory? In case of activated complex theory, we have the same graph I can write, reactant, product. So, the threshold energy is also termed as this is the energy of the activated complex. So, reactant is not converting directly into products, it converts into energy rich activated complex which is relatively less stable breaks down to give the final products. So, graph is very very similar to the previous one, this is nothing but the energy of activation. So, the uh, species which is present at the threshold energy level or above it will be termed as activated complex which is a high energy rich species which breaks up to give the final products. For example, if I take the formation of H i, we can see very clearly H 2 plus I 2 gives rise to H i. So, there is hydrogen molecule H H bonded to each other, iodine molecule which are bonded to each other. When they come close to collide with each other, the bond between two hydrogen atom is broken and bond between two iodine atoms are broken and new bonds between H and I will be formed. So, the activated complex is also like a transition state where the bonds are partially broken and partially formed. So, this is a high energy rich species which breaks finally to give two molecules of H i. This is a simple possible example to illustrate the formation of activated complex or it is also termed as transition state. So, the species corresponding to the threshold energy level of a reaction will be termed as either activated complex or transition state which usually have partial bonding between the atoms. It is always high energy in uh, content and it will be unstable breaks down to give the product of the reaction. So, if I take this activate complex theory applicable for energy level diagram, I wrote earlier same thing. So, threshold energy is replaced by the activated complex, this is the energy of the reactant H2 plus I2, this is energy of the product that is H i and in this case the energy between A and B will be nothing but delta H of the reaction. Since here energy of A is higher than energy of B, it is an exothermic reaction. So, this is an activated complex or threshold energy or transition state. So, energy of the activate complex is always higher than that of the reactants as well as products. So, if you draw the same thing for exothermic reaction, we just draw that now, same thing I will be drawing once again. So, this is a reactant and this is the product. So, you can see reactant energy is higher than the reactant energy of the products. This will be delta H of the reaction and this will be E A of the reaction. This is energy, this is reaction coordinate. Same graph what we wrote earlier. You can clearly see that energy of activation is uh, between reactant and the threshold energy level. And delta H is the energy difference between reactant and product. So, delta H here can be greater than E A, can be less than E A, can be equal to E A, all three possibilities are there. Suppose I write that uh, the graph here like this, let us say this is the graph, this is now E A 
and this is delta h. Now, delta h is more than E a. In other words, it can be equal to E a. You can make the two lines almost of equal length. So, all three possibilities are there for exothermic reaction. So, energy of activation, I can say it can be equal to delta h, it can be even greater than delta h, it can be even less than delta h. That is for exothermic reaction. So, same graph is repeated once again in a clean format. So, you can see the graph reactants product this is delta h and the activated complex. Same thing if I write for endothermic. In endothermic reaction, the reactant rate energy will be lesser and the product energy will be higher. So, if you write the profile diagram, it has to go like this. Now, if I take the energy of reactants, energy of products, this will be delta H and this will be Ea. Now, this is energy, this is reaction coordinate. Now, if I take here delta H and Ea, how the relation will be? Ea cannot be less than delta H because Ea includes this delta H in the value and the reactant energy and the product energy and the threshold energy if you take threshold energy is always higher than both reactant and products. So, whatever the way you draw the graph for this particular endothermic reaction, the value of energy of activation has to be greater than enthalpy change of the reaction. So, here always I can write Ea greater than delta H for endothermic reaction. So, this is important concept you need to remember. This was asked in one of the J examination. Uh, the value of activation energy for an endothermic reaction is. So, option A was say greater than delta H, then less than delta H equal to delta H cannot be predicted. So, it has to be greater than delta H, one of the most important concept in energy profile diagram of endothermic reactions. This is the graph in a neat version. So, you can see very clearly the smooth curve reactants, the products delta H, this is the value of E A and this is the value of delta H. So, delta H and E A is included in the reaction. So, this delta H, this E A what is written here, the reverse reaction is exothermic if the forward reaction is endothermic. If forward reaction is endothermic, the reverse reaction will be exothermic. So, for the reverse reaction E A can be this for the forward reaction E A will be this. So, difference in energy of activation of forward and backward reaction will give us delta H of the reaction. So, that is what is written here E A is equal to activation energy of the forward reaction, E A dash is given as activation energy of backward reaction, the delta H is nothing but E A minus E A dash. So, depending upon which is exothermic, endothermic, you have to take the difference between the energy of activation of both forward and backward reactions to get enthalpy change of the reaction. Now, Arrhenius equation we have to get into logarithmic form. So, we already wrote what is Arrhenius equation. So, k is equal to a into e to the power minus E A by R T. This is the Arrhenius equation. Let us convert this into log form. So, if I take E power is there, so I will take ln on both sides. So, ln k is equal to ln A minus E A by R T. Converting ln to log, so 2.303 ln k is equal to 2.303 ln A minus E A by R T or I can write log, sorry this is log, this is also log. So, log k is equal to log A 
minus Ea by 2.303 Rt. So, this is the logarithmic form of Arrhenius equation. So, log of rate constant k is equal to log of Arrhenius factor A minus Ea by 2.303 Rt. Now, if I take the same equation once again, I will rewrite it as log k is equal to log A, I will write later min, uh, minus Ea by 2.303 Rt, I will write as minus Ea by 2.303 R in bracket, then I write this as 1 by T plus log A. So, I can compare this reaction equation as y is equal to m x plus c. So, I can clearly see it represents straight line if you plot a graph of log of k versus 1 by t, 1 by t you get a straight line with a negative slope. So, the slope will give us energy of activation that is E a by 2.303 are very very important relation. If you plot a graph of log of rate constant versus 1 by t in Kelvin, then you get a straight line with a negative slope. The slope is nothing but equal to E a by 2.303 r. So, the slope is found out experimentally. I can find out the energy of activation for the reaction using this formula. Also, if you want to find out the energy of activation without graph formula method, I will take at two different temperatures. So, let us say at temperature T1, I can take log K1 is equal to log A minus E A by 2.303 R T1. At temperature T2, I can write log k2 equals log a minus e a by 2.303 r t2. So, a is a Arrhenius factor. So, it is the maximum number of collisions that can take place in the reacting system. So, a will be almost remaining constant for a given reaction. So, at two different temperatures, A can be taken almost as a constant. Assuming that energy of activation is not changing appreciably in this particular temperature range, I can calculate E A value. So, T1 and T2, I will take T2 higher than T1. So, definitely K2 is greater than K1. So, I can write subtract 1 from 2, I get log of K2 by K1 is equal to, I will take minus E A by 2.303 as a common or since it is minus, it is 1 by T 1 minus 1 by T 2. If you simplify further, uh, I will write here, if you simplify further, I will get log k2 by k1 is equal to E a by 2.303 r into T2 minus T1 by T1 T2. This is the formula which we can use to find out the energy of activation using two different temperature. Same thing is written here. So, k is equal to a into e to the power of minus E a by r t taking ln, ln k is equal to ln a minus E a by R t, converting into log, log k is equal to log a minus E a by 2.303 R t. So, it is of the form y is equal to m x plus c. So, if you draw a graph of log k versus 1 by t, I get intercept as log a and slope as E a by 2.303 R. So, from the slope, we can find out the energy of activation. Instead of plotting log A, if you plot ln A versus 1 by T, 
then 2.303 will not be there in the slope expression. So, it is going to be E A by R and intercept will become ln A, but not log A. So, graph is shown in this a negative slope you can see slope is equal to E A by 2.303 uh, R, R is missing and log K is 1 by T. Okay. So, this is the logarithmic form of our NAC equation. Graphically, we can find out energy of activation of a reaction. So, the formula method, two different temperatures log K1 is log A by E A by 2.303 R T1 and log K2 is equal to log A minus E A by 2.303 R T2. So, taking the difference between 2 and 1 log k2 by k1 is E a by 2.303 r into 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 and simplification of that will give me this formula. So, this formula is important, it can be asked in PU, problems can also be asked and formula can also be asked log of k2 by k1 is equal to E a by 2.303 r into t2 minus t1 by t1 t2. So, K1 and K2 are determined experimentally at two different temperatures T1 and T2, then definitely we can calculate E A using this formula. So, reminder once again for students, those who have doubts in these concepts are in S equation and derivation of energy of activation from our in S equation you can post your doubts to the WhatsApp number 7259012123. Let us take some problems on this Arrhenius equation and energy of activation concept. Example 1, it says the energy of activation of the forward and backward reactions are 240 kilojoules and 320 kilojoules respectively calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction. So, we can clearly see here forward reaction has a lesser activation energy than the backward reaction. If the forward reaction has lesser activation energy, backward reaction has more activation energy, then the reaction has to be exothermic. Very important, if forward reaction energy of activation is less compared to backward reaction activation energy in the same reaction the reaction will be exothermic. If forward reaction energy of activation is higher than the backward reaction rate, backward reaction activation energy, then that is going to be that is going to be endothermic reaction. So, if you draw the graph, exothermic, so reactant at a higher energy level and product at lower energy level. So, what is given in the problem? This is given and this is the threshold energy level, this is given. So, what is the values? 240 and 320. This is 240 and this is 320. So, difference will be obviously 80 kilo joule per mole. Since it is exothermic, delta H is equal to minus 80 kilo joule per mole. So, simple format. So, delta H is equal to uh, energy of activation of forward reaction minus energy of activation of backward reaction. So, that formula I can use E A. 1 minus E A 2. So, 240 minus 320 is equal to minus 80 kilojoules per mole. So, that is the answer for the first problem is going to be minus 80 kilojoules per mole. So, graph and solution you can copy. So, very simple you need to identify which direction the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So, I will repeat the forward reaction activation energy is less than the backward reaction activation energy, it has to be exothermic 
if backward reaction re, uh, activation energy is higher than the forward reaction then it is going to be endothermic. We will go to the next question. For a reaction the activation energy is given as 0, very unlikely. So, activation energy is 0. What is the value of rate constant at 300 Kelvin if A is 1.6 into 10 power 6 per second? So, R is given as 8.314. If you recall the Arrhenius equation, K is equal to A into E to the power minus E A by R T. As E A equals 0, E A equals 0, K become equal to A into E to the power 0. E to the power 0 is 1, K becomes equal to A. This is the important concept. So, A value is given as 1.6 10 power 6. So, K also becomes equal to 1.6 10 power 6 per second. So, this concept you need to remember. This has actually asked in one of the PU exam the maximum possible value for the rate constant of a reaction at any temperature. The maximum possible value for the rate constant of a reaction is always the Arrhenius factor. So, Arrhenius factor is a maximum possible value for rate constant. It cannot be more than that because you cannot have energy active of activation as negative. So, it can be positive or it can be 0, it can never be negative. As a result, the maximum value possible for K is always equal to Arrhenius factor. So, which reaction will have the zero activation energy? Generally, in free radical reactions. So, the recombination of free radicals to form the molecules is having zero activation energy because free radicals are already energy rich, they are highly unstable. The recombination is so spontaneous, it will happen within fraction of a second, the rate is going to be maximum. Every collision between the free radicals will form the molecule. So, for that reaction, the energy of activation is usually 0. Since E A equals 0, K is equal to A into is equal to 1.6 10 power 6. The third question, the rate constant of a reaction is 1.5 10 power 7 per second at 50 degrees Celsius then 4.5 into 10 power 7 per second at 100 degrees Celsius. You have to calculate the activation energy for the reaction. It is a direct question based on calculation of activation energy at two different temperature. We have the formula ready with us log of K2 by K1 is equal to E A by 2.303 R into T2 minus T1 by T1 T2. We know all the parameters except E A. So, if you substitute the values in the formula, so I can write E A is equal to, I will take this to the right hand side 2.303 R T1 T2 by T2 minus T1 into log K2 by K1. So, 2.303 into 8.314 into 50 degrees say 323, 100 degrees 373, difference in temperature is 50 Kelvin log of, uh, you see the values, it is 4.5 by 1.5. So, 4.5 by 1.5, 10 power 7 get cancelled, this also become log 3, 45 by 15. So, if you simplify the E A is equal to, so 2.303, 8 point 3 323, 70, 3 divided by 50 into log of 3. This comes to 22,011 joules or I can say 22.01 kilojoules 
as the final answer. So, the simplification part has to be done log 3 is 0 0.4771. So, simple calculators are allowed in PUC you can calculate and get the right answer. So, 22.01 kilojoules per mole is the energy of activation. So, 22.012 kilojoules is given as the answer. Let us go to the next problem. It is based on the graphical part. The slope of a line in the graph of log k versus 1 by t is given as 5841 Kelvin. Calculate the energy of activation for the reaction. So, we know when you plot a graph of sorry, when you plot a graph of log k versus 1 by t, the slope is nothing but E a by 2.303 r. So, if you multiply slope with this minus 5841 minus is the slope is negative do not take the minus sign 5841 into 2.303 into 8.314 will give me an answer of 1.11810 10 power 5 joules or 111.8 kilojoules per mole is the energy of activation. It is a simple direct formula based problem. We know that slope is equal to E a by 2.303 r. You multiply the given slope with 2.303 and the gas constant that is 8.314. The answer is given in expected in joules. You have to write 8.314 for r and get the value of E a. So, in this case it is coming to be 1.118 10 power minus 10 power plus 5 or 111.8 kilojoules per mole. That is the answer for example 4. Okay, solution slides are there. Example 5, the E A for decomposition of H i at 581 Kelvin is given as 209.5 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the fraction of molecule possessing this activation energy. So, here we know that k by a is the fraction which is equal to e to the power minus e a by r t. So, you have to find out this value. So, k by a is the fraction of molecule possessing activation energy. So, what is this e, e a by r t? So, first find out e a by r t. e a is given as 209.5 and temperature is 581 Kelvin. So, e a by r t is equal to 209.5 into 1000 whole divided by 8.314 into uh, 581. So, this comes to 43.37. So, it is e power minus that. So, e power minus 43.37, if you take the anti logarithms and get the value, is going to be 1.46 10 power minus 9. So, this is the uh, value of k by a 1.46 10 power minus 19 not 9 but 10 power minus 19. Okay. So, E a decomposition is given 209.5 581 Kelvin is a direct formula calculate just what is the value of e to the power minus E a by R t. So, we get the value as 1.47 or 1.46 10 power minus 19. The next concept is effect of catalyst on the rate of a reaction. So, what is exactly a catalyst? So, generally a catalyst means a positive catalyst. So, catalyst is substance which will increase the rate of a chemical reaction. So, how exactly the catalyst will increase the rate of a chemical reaction? 
if you take the role of a catalyst, catalyst will take the reaction in a different path where energy of activation is usually lesser. If I draw the graph, usual graph of the potential energy diagram, if I take this is the energy, this is reaction coordinate, this is reaction coordinate, reactant energy is this, the energy of activation and this is the product. This is reactant, this is product and this is uncatalyzed reaction let us say. The difference between the catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction, the reaction goes in a different path where activation energy is less. So this is for catalyzed reaction at the same temperature. So if I take the energy of activation, this is the energy of reactant, this is the energy of activation for catalyzed reaction and this is the energy of activation for uncatalyzed reaction. If I say Ea1, this has Ea2, so definitely Ea1 is greater than Ea2. So the catalyst will take the reaction in a different path where activation energy is generally lesser. So in that way, the reaction rate get enhanced in the presence of a catalyst. So let us see some of the example for catalyst of reaction. So here 2 KCl O3 decomposition of potassium chlorate to KCl and oxygen MnO2 will act as the catalyst. And several examples are available in industrial preparation of ammonia by Haber's process. We have nitrogen, hydrogen combining to form ammonia and iron is used as a catalyst for this particular reaction. So generally these catalysts will take the reaction in a different path where energy activation is lower. So a catalyst increase the rate by providing an alternate path where activation energy is less. The same diagram, energy profile diagram you can see clearly reactants energy, product energy and the path is dotted line giving the catalyzed reaction, the rigid line is giving uncatalyzed reaction. You can see energy of activation is always low for the catalyzed reaction compared to uncatalyzed reaction. How do we get Arrhenius equation with respect to the effect of catalyst? Let us say the rate of reaction in the absence of catalyst as K1 and the rate of reaction in the presence of catalyst is K2, so K2 should be greater than K1. So we will write the Arrhenius equation for both the situation. So log of K1 is equal to log A minus Ea is same now, Ea1 for uncatalyzed reaction, temperature is same, so 2.303 T is same. Same catalyzed reaction log K2 is equal to log A minus Ea2 by 2.303 RT. If you take the difference between 2 and 1, so I can write the equation as log K2 by K1, log A get cancelled. Since it is negative, it becomes Ea1 minus Ea2 whole divided by 2.303 RT. So if you know the activation energy of catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction at a particular temperature, we can find out the efficiency of a catalyst in terms of the ratio of rate constants of catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction. This is the Arrhenius equation for catalysis or catalyzed reaction and uncatalyzed reaction. So same thing, so log K1 is equal to log A minus Ea1 by 2.303 RT, log K2 is log A minus Ea2 by 2.303 RT, take the difference log K2 by K1 is difference of the two quantities, taking 2.303 RT as common, we end up with this expression log K2 by K1 is equal to 
ea1 minus ea2 by 2.303 rt. The collision theory of reaction rates. So, in collision theory of reaction rate, the basic assumption is whenever the reactant has to convert into products, there must be collision between the reactant molecules. If the reactant molecules collide, suppose I take A plus B giving rise to product, then molecules of A should collide with molecules of B then only there is a conversion of A and B into products. So, in a reacting system at a given temperature between A and B gaseous reaction if I assume there will be innumerable number of collisions happening, very very large number of collisions will be happening between the molecules of A and molecules of B at a given temperature in a given condition of temperature and pressure. But all these collisions will not be able to convert the reactants into products. So, we discussed earlier concept of what is called as threshold energy. So, minimum energy which is required to produce the products. So, the reactant molecules which have acquired this threshold energy when they collide they are going to convert into products. So, the collision number or collision frequency it is you have learnt in uh, gaseous state. So, collision frequency is the number of collision happening between two molecules per unit time. So, per second is the usual uh, value. So, number of collisions per second is nothing but collision frequency. So, if I use this collision frequency and try to calculate rate theoret theoretically the rate assuming that all collisions bring about the chemical reaction the rate will be very 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 high, but practically the rates are found to be much 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 lesser. So, all collisions will never bring about the chemical reaction. So, the collisions which are able to convert reactant into products they are called as effective collisions. So, what is this effective collisions? Effective collision is a collision which can bring about the chemical reaction converting the reactant into products. So, the condition is the reactants should have the energy greater than the threshold energy level. So, we will see these points. According to the collision theory of rates, a chemical reaction takes place due to collision between the reacting molecules. Then all collision between the reactant molecules will not bring about the chemical reaction and the number of collisions per second per unit volume is known as collision frequency. So, all collisions in the reacting system cannot convert the reactants into products. Only the collisions which are responsible for bringing the reaction are called as effective collisions. So, the reactant should have energy greater than the threshold energy, then only they are able to convert into products. So, that effective collisions are responsible for bringing out the chemical change. Suppose I consider a bimolecular reaction of type A plus B giving rise to product. So, incorporating the collision factor, so rate is equal to the number of collisions happening between A and B that is ZAB is a collision frequency into the energy of activation factor e to the power minus Ea by Rt will give the rate. So, it is similar to the Arrhenius equation. So, rate constant k is equal to ZAB is in terms of Arrhenius factor e to the power of minus Ea by Rt. So, the Arrhenius factor is also termed as collision frequency factor or the pre-exponential factor. So, it is based on this particular concept. So, collision frequency factor is also one of the other term given for Arrhenius factor A. But sometimes even if the reactants possess the activation energy, when they collide they may not be able to convert into products. So, all collisions even though the reactants having activation energy, 
or more than threshold energy, sometimes they are also unable to convert into products. This is due to lack of proper orientation in three dimension. So, effective collision includes both. So, if I take the effective collision, so the first point is the molecules should possess should possess energy greater than threshold energy. This is one and second factor there should be proper orientation of molecules in three dimension. So, if these two factors are met, that collision between the reactants will definitely convert reactant into product. So, this is effective collision which is responsible for the rate. So, in a given system, though the number of collision happening is very high, the number of effective collision is going to be much, much lesser. So, observed rate is much lesser than the Arrhenius factor. If energy of activation becomes zero, then each and every collision will bring about the chemical reaction. As a result, the maximum value of rate constant can be equal to the Arrhenius factor or collision factor. So, effective collision, the collision in which the molecules collide with sufficient kinetic energy that is threshold energy and also have proper orientation so that the bonds can break, bonds can be formed and form the new products. To illustrate this orientation, we have a small representation. So, I am considering here reaction between methyl bromide and hydroxide ion to form methanol and Br minus. This I think you should have come across in second track in some organic part. It is nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, methyl bromide is the alkyl halide, OH minus is the nucleophile which will attack methyl bromide to convert into methyl alcohol. So, let us say in three dimension, I know in methyl bromide, carbon is sp3 hybridized, you have three hydrogen and one bromine and OH minus is a nucleophile. So, there are two possibilities. If it is proper orientation that OH minus is coming from the direction of carbon and bromine is going out. So, OH can form a bond with carbon at the same time carbon bromine bond can be broken out. If the molecule approach each other in such a way that OH and B are facing each other, then the negative charge on OH minus lone pair on oxygen will be repelled by lone pair of bromine even though these molecules possess threshold energy level because of the lack of proper orientation, this collision will not bring about the products. But here this collision bring about the product because this OH and this CS3Br has proper orientation in three dimension which will enable the COH bond to be formed and CBr bond to be broken down. So, this is additional factor we need to include in the equation to come up with the rate constant expression. So, to account for the effective collisions another factor P called as probability factor which is taking care of the orientation concept. So, if I take the combination of collision factor that is Z and orientation factor P, we can come to the final expression as the rate is equal to P into Z A B e to the power minus A by R T. So, P is the probability factor or orientation factor, Z A B is called as collision factor both are co taken in product with e to the power minus e a by r t that is energy factor all the three are taken into account give the rate of the chemical reaction. So, the modified Arrhenius equation according to collision theory can be equal to k into p into z a b into e to the power minus e a by r t. This is the expression for rate constant according to collision theory of reaction rates. So, what and all we learnt in today's session? We prob solved the problems on effect of temperature of reaction rate that is temperature coefficient, threshold energy concept, activation energy concept 
and the theories of reaction rate that is Arrhenius theory, activated complex theory and towards the end we even we studied collision theory of reaction rates. And also we learnt how to write energy profile diagram for exothermic and endothermic reaction. And problems on so effect of catalyst on rate of reaction, collision theory and the effective collision concept we learnt in today's session. So the homework, you have to complete the homework assigned in the uh, lectures in manual plus question bank problem you have to solve. So, Thank you very much.